What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Eric and I'm a first year medical student in Canada. Today we are going on a walk down memory lane with a bunch of birds as I do a little bit of reflection on my first few months of medical school so far and what it's been like throughout all of COVID. Now when I first got into medical school, I don't think anyone was really expecting COVID to blow up and be as long and as, as bad as it was. Personally, I was kind of expecting it to be like a two week break and then we'd be back in class, ready to go, bright eyed and cheery faced from an extended break that we didn't know was coming. But now almost a year after COVID first started and about eight months since we've been in quarantine, COVID is still going on. And in Canada at least, it looks like we're about to get a second lockdown as new COVID cases are starting to hit record high numbers. And honestly, it's pretty, it's pretty scary. It's pretty unfamiliar and it's been challenging to adapt to all of this, especially while trying to adapt to a new circumstance like going to medical school for me as well. I know a lot of people are probably struggling with similar things and going through their own difficult time with COVID. And I hope that sharing these kinds of reflections and stories really helps show people that they're not alone in these struggles. Granted, they are different, but we are all struggling in different ways and hopefully we can all take and learn from those experiences and hopefully help each other. I just realized I turned into a dead end so I'm going to go back through that uh, little walkway with all the birds and continue this talk. I think that way at least we will have some comfort in knowing that you know there are other people out there that are struggling and at least for me that helps sometimes just to know I'm not alone. So before I got into med school, I went to Western University for Medical Sciences and there I was studying Physiology and Pharmacology. So I went into med school with a good foundation of the basics. Like I know how the human body works, I know how some drugs kind of work, I know a basic anatomy and things. So when I went in, I was ready for all the knowledge that was coming up. It's not like it was the first time I was learning it, so I had a good foundation of where to start. What was really different for me was the way that you learn. At Western, it was mostly just, you go to lecture, you sit down, take notes, and you just kind of just sit there passively for the next hour or two. But in medical school now, it's actually a lot of active participation. It's like six to seven people with one tutor, so you have to be actively engaging or else she's gonna notice you that you're just sitting there. And on top of that, when you go to class, it's not like the tutor just tells you what you need to know. It's more, you have to do your own research on what's important and then what you want to share with the group about what you researched. So now three months into medical school, I think I finally kind of gotten adjusted to that. And I started to see some notable improvements in my process about how I study, and how I gather research, that it's getting a lot more efficient and faster for me. Granted, I still am only three months in, so I'm not a pro or anything, but I'm definitely getting the hang of it. Something else that's been really difficult too is just you know finding the motivation to be productive though. Back at Western, it was a lot of studying at the library, surrounded by my friends that were also trying to be productive. So we all kind of like peer pressured each other into actually studying. On top of that, I studied on the main floor of the Western's libraries. So there's lots of people there that could easily see if you're just goofing off or procrastinating. And I always felt this like implicit, you know, pressure to, oh, that person's watching me, I should probably be studying. But now that I'm at home, it's, it's not hard for me to work for 10 minutes and then look at my bed and think, hmm, I could really use a nap right now. And then I end up taking a half an hour break for my 10 minute workload. Yeah, it happens a lot actually. <laughs> so yeah, it's been kind of hard to find motivation, but I find that one thing that really helps is studying with your friends in the online setting. You know, it's not the same as in person, but it still creates that sense of, you know, we're in this together. We're gonna get through this. We're going to keep each other accountable and make sure that we're working hard so we're not super stressed out when test time comes. So my girlfriend's actually been studying for her final. She also goes to med school. She's at the University of Ottawa. Check out my girlfriend tag with her if you are so interested in learning more about us. Yeah, she's, she's uh, keeping me accountable and making sure I'm just not taking naps all day. You know, she checks in on me and I check in on her. And a lot of the time we work together and just keep each other accountable. And like I was saying, just create that pressure of, you know, someone's watching me, so I should probably be productive, but in a good way, that helps. I think in the end of the day, if you're not being productive, you actually end up more stressed, right? So yeah, that's been school so far. We've done our first unit, which was respirology and cardiology, so lungs and heart. And now we're in our second unit, 
And we're actually past halfway through, which is crazy to think about. Uh, but we've done renal, which is the kidneys, and right now we're in hematology, which is blood. Uh, we're actually almost done hematology, and then we're moving on to oncology before we start unit three. To think about it, it's actually crazy how time is flying by because I start clerkship, so when you're doing rotations and all that stuff from Grey's Anatomy uh, in August, I think, of next year, so not too far away. Not too far away. Am I ready? Not sure. Next, maybe let's talk a little bit about making friends. So making friends, like, you know, that's not something that's like too easy for a lot of people in general. And it's even harder when you have to do it online. Right now I've been hanging out with a lot of my older friends from high school or from when I was growing up. We've been playing some video games together just like we used to back in the good old days. But making new friends has been a lot more difficult. A lot of these people from med school I've never met before. And they come from so many different walks of life and diverse backgrounds that it's harder to get to know each other when you're doing it online. You don't feel that like personable connection that you would get from in person. And plus sometimes it's just a little bit awkward. Add on connection issues and internet problems and your whole recipe is just, it's really hard to make friends online. Granted, I have been able to make some friends from my tutorial groups as well as just some people I knew from Western beforehand that also are going to Mac now for medical school. And we've been just getting to know each other a little bit better. I would like to know a lot more people in my class a lot better and hopefully that we can do that in the future once COVID actually settles down. I think the hard part of trying to make friends online is it doesn't happen as naturally as you would in person. Like say I was in class and you know, I have no paper or something. And I asked the person next to me like, hey, like, do you have any paper? Just the act of actually starting the conversation is just a lot easier when you're in person. And oftentimes that conversation started just snowballs into a whole conversation and you know each other a lot better and you might make a friend out of it. And online, you kind of have to do the same thing, but it's a little bit harder because there aren't as many like natural, like cake starters to a conversation where you can get to know someone a little bit better. So you have to try a lot harder. It's not impossible, but it's not the easiest thing in the world either. So next, let's talk a little bit about doing a long distance relationship. So, so far, my girlfriend and I have been doing long distance for a little bit now. We're going to have to do long distance for the next few years at least, which is, I know it's gonna to be tough. And, you know, it's been, <laughs> it hasn't been very long and I already missed her already. So, you know, it's kind of an unfortunate situation. Uh, we don't go to the same school anymore, but we always try to call each other, call each other once in the morning and once at night and make sure that we're always talking to each other and communicating about our days and what's going on, what we're thinking about. And, you know, we talk to each other so much that sometimes I feel like she's still beside me. We're gonna try to visit a lot. So, you know, long distance relationship, but we're making the very best of it. She's going through a lot of things with school herself and her, she actually has like big, like 50% or 30% exams. So I think school is a lot more stressful for her. Um, so I think a lot of what I'm trying to do in this relationship is just, you know, make sure she's okay, make sure things are okay. Uh, keep in touch with her, don't give her reasons to worry and just try to help her out with all the stress that she has. Alicia, if you're watching this, love you. Uh, but yeah, hopefully at, at the end of a long journey, you know, the person you're dating is always or for me at least, uh, the person that you hope to be in a long distance, re uh, in a long term relationship with, not long distance preferably, um, long term relationship where you like, you know, you settle down, have some kids and all that stuff. So hopefully by the end of this long distance, we will be together, reunited, both eventually doctors, which is crazy. And you know, we won't have to do long distance anymore, which will be nice, I get to see her every day and also talking about hopes for the future. Uh, obviously, I hope that COVID is going to settle down soon and you know, you, we can all do our parts to help slow the spread and try to make sure that we're not in quarantine for the next 10 years. Uh, wear your masks, stay six feet apart from people. You know, generally just be kind of clean. Just follow public health safety guidelines and eventually we'll all come out of this and schools will open back up and we'll be able to finally meet all my classmates in person do all the things that we should have been doing this year while we were getting to know each other. And yeah, hopefully find that motivation to study again when libraries open back up. I think I, I really miss getting that coffee and going to the library and then just sitting down and chatting with my friends for like an hour before we actually start working. You know, like I think those are some of the smaller things 
are moments that we kind of take for granted when they're happening, but you think about most and you really miss the most when they're gone. So yeah, that's a little reflection on a walk down memory lane. Talked about, you know, what it's been like for me for COVID so far, what it's been like in school, and how it's been trying to make friends and managing a long distance relationship during COVID. And we talked a little bit about my hopes for the future, you know. So I know this video won't be 35 minutes long, but we've been walking for 35 minutes and just rambling. And we've walked three kilometers and we've gone almost 4,000 steps in. So pretty good, pretty good, I like it. Staying active, getting outside, all helps clear your head so you're not stuck in home all day. Doing these kinds of reflections isn't something I normally do, but it's actually made me feel a lot better and gotten a lot of things off my chest that I've been holding in for a bit. So if you're watching this, I hope that it brought you some comfort in knowing that you're not alone, you're not going through this by yourself, and that one day we will all get out of this house and this environment and COVID together. That's been your daily dose of Medi Sun. Thank you for joining me on this walk down memory lane, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.